On Yom Kippur, the book of Jonah is read in synagogues and Jewish homes around the world. Jonah is read because it reminds us that God always brings justice. We cannot run away from our sins being accounted for, not even a Jewish prophet can. And it reminds us that God's mercies are limitless with his forgiveness of Nineveh, a city he promised to destroy until they repented. If we repent wholeheartedly, God will forgive us no matter how egregious our past sins are. When I was taking an introductory biblical Hebrew course in graduate school, I wrote a short paper comparing Jonah 1, 1 through 6 with Matthew 8, where Yeshua, which is Jesus, is at sea with his disciples and he calms the storm. In this paper, I argue that Matthew is doing a spin-off of the story of Jonah in order to portray Yeshua as the Messiah. Matthew is priming his readers for when Yeshua shares the ultimate sign of his Messiahship with the Pharisees, the sign of Jonah. His resurrection. In Matthew 12, 39 through 41, Yeshua says, Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Noah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. I think Matthew foreshadows this conversation in Matthew 12 when he shares of Yeshua calming the storm in Matthew 8, which plays on the story of Jonah to show that a prophet greater than Jonah is here, the Messiah. I'll first read Jonah 1, 1 through 6, and then read Matthew 8. The translation of Jonah 1, 1 through 6 is my own. If you are curious to see the justification for my translation, you can find it in the description. Jonah 1, 1 through 6 says, And the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Get up, and go to the great city of Nineveh, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, and he paid his fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. And the Lord hurled a great wind on the sea, and there was a great storm on the sea, and the ship was at risk to break into pieces. And the sailors were afraid, and each man cried out to his God, and they threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load from upon them. And Jonah went down to the innermost parts of the ship, and he laid down and fell into a deep sleep. And the captain came to him and said to him, What are you doing sleeping? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps your God will give a thought to us so that we do not perish. Raymond Person notes that the book of Jonah uses many rhetorical and literary maneuvers, quote, to satirize Jonah as a prophet who in many ways is the reversal of what would be expected of a true prophet, unquote. One of the reasons Person thinks the author of Jonah is satirizing the prophet Jonah is the wordplay present in Jonah 1, which can be easily missed when reading English translations, and it is illuminated when reading the Hebrew. In Jonah 1.1, God's first command to Jonah is kum leich, which I think is best translated as get up and go. The Lord proceeds to command Jonah to get up and go to Nineveh and preach repentance there. From here, satirical humor ensues. Jonah promptly got up, vayakam, except it was not to get up and go to Nineveh, but instead he got up and went down, Yered, to Joppa. There he found a pagan crew headed for Tarshish and went down, Yered, into the ship. God then hurled a great wind to cause a storm, and instead of helping the sailors lighten the ship, Jonah went down, Yered, into the innermost parts of the ship and lay down to sleep. The movement away from God in Jonah is purposeful and ironic. The repeated use of Yerad culminates and is punctuated by Jonah falling into a deep sleep, Yeradam. Then the captain of the ship barges in and calls Jonah to get up, kum, and asks Jonah to call on his God to spare the ship. Person notes, 
Jonah's actions and words make him look ridiculous, and the narrator selects and arranges material to emphasize his ridiculousness. Jonah's refusal to go up to Nineveh leads him to go down until eventually the Lord casts him down into the heart of the seas. Jonah's cowardice is consistently contrasted with the piety of the pagan crew who call on their gods, perform sacrifices, and repent for killing an innocent man. From the beginning of the book, Jonah is consistently poked at as a prophet whose character is put to shame by pagans. Jonah 1, 1 through 6 has caused me to wonder if Matthew primes his audience for the sign of Jonah as Yeshua's ultimate messianic sign when he describes Yeshua calming the storm in Matthew 8, 23 through 27. This is what it says. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even winds and sea obey him? This scene reminds me of Jonah 1, 1 through 6 in several ways. A prophet and a group of men are out at sea during a great storm. The prophet is sleeping during the storm. The men on the ship hurry to wake the prophet, asking for their help to calm the sea. And about this similarity more specifically, the Greek version of Jonah in the Septuagint has the pagan captain cry out to Jonah for help that they may not perish. Apolumi is the Greek word that is used there. And the disciples in Matthew 8.25 use the same word when they cry out, Lord, save us, we are perishing, Apolumetha. The prophet then wakes and calms the sea in both of these stories. Despite these similarities, Matthew plays off the story of Jonah in several ways by doing a bit of a role reversal between Jonah and Yeshua. Where Jonah is a bumbling prophet who is less pious than the pagan crew, Yeshua is the Messiah who his disciples recognize as Lord, and he shows authority over the sea. Jonah follows a pagan crew into a ship as he is running from God. Yeshua is followed by the disciples onto the boat, where he shows he has the power of God. The author of Jonah has Jonah sleeping in the boat as a point of ridiculing the prophet as he runs from God. Matthew has Jesus sleeping in the boat during the storm to show the peace he has being the commander of the wind and the waves. The author of Jonah has the pagan captain request Jonah to call on his God. Matthew has the disciples calling on Yeshua directly as the one who can save. Lord, save us. The pagan captain yells at Jonah to get up and call on God to calm the sea. Yeshua himself is the one who gets up and commands the sea to be calm himself. This leaves the disciples in wonderment. What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. The story of Jonah negatively calls Jonah's character into question. Matthew's portrayal of Jesus here causes his disciples to wonder what kind of amazing figure he is. In addition to these observations, I find it striking that Jonah 1.9 says, The Lord is the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. And a text from the Dead Sea Scrolls, a Second Temple Jewish text, that is 4Q 5.21, fragment 2, column 2, lines 1 through 14, begins by saying, The heavens and the earth will obey his Messiah, the sea and all that is in them. Here we have another Jewish text outside of the New Testament, written around the same time period, which surmises that the Messiah will have the power to command the heavens, the earth, and the sea, just like how Matthew presents Yeshua as the Messiah here in Matthew 8. As mentioned, right before Jesus himself calms the stormy seas, the disciples call him Lord. I think Matthew's spinoff of Jonah hints toward what Yeshua says in Matthew 12, that, quote, something greater than Jonah is here. Matthew swaps the prophet Jonah with the miracle-working Yeshua in a calming of the sea story, which illustrates that he is even greater than a prophet. He is the Messiah, the one whose messianic identity will be confirmed by his physical resurrection from the dead, the sign of Jonah. Unlike Jonah, who after spending three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, 
before God rescued him from death, went to Nineveh, preached repentance, and despaired when God spared the Ninevites, even asking God to take his life again. Yeshua spent three days in the belly of the earth. God raised him from the dead, conquering death and bringing salvation from our sins, even the worst of sinners who place their trust in him. Just as the story of Jonah reminds us of God's justice and mercy when we read it during Yom Kippur, may we remember Yeshua as our Messiah, the Lord who calms the wind and seas and brings justice and mercy and grants us atonement and forgiveness when we commit our lives to him and attest to the truth of his death and resurrection. If you learned something new, click that subscribe button to be notified whenever we make new content. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Two Messianic Jews, that's with the number two. And you can get access to content early and hear more from us if you support us on Subscribestar. All the links are in the description. See you next time.